So I've been teaching a lot through the Old Testament um, and the Minor Prophets here the last few months. And it's been an amazing experience for me because I've never taught through them. And it's been fascinating to see how many things that are going on in our own culture that parallel um, what was going on thousands of years ago in these ancient civilizations as they're trying to honor and follow God. And we're doing the same thing and trying to honor and follow God. Um, and as a believer in Christ, man, like, the, you know, the, the things uh, that, that the Lord, like he delights in is when we walk in obedience to his word, what he calls us to. And so in the Old Testament, man, you start reading uh, about a lot of different things and you'll find um, that, the, that the dominant sin of the day was idol worship. Uh, and they would, they would worship these idols that they would create. And, and I think that, that causes a disconnect for us when we read the Old Testament, because we we don't tend to we don't tend to think of ourselves as people who worship worship idols in the way that we read the Old Testament and hear about these idols. But what's fascinating is Habakkuk, he talks about um, this idol worship and and he says, Of what value is an idol since a man has carved it? Um, for he who makes it trusts in his own creation, he makes idols that cannot speak. He says, Woe to him who says to wood come to life or to lifeless stone, wake up. Can it give guidance is it, even though it's covered with gold and silver? And he goes on to say, but what's fascinating to me is that um, he gives value to what his hands have made. That's an idol. So like for modern day um, worshipers, like when we, when we give value to something our hands have made above God, that's an idol in our lives. So if your hands have put you on a path to success as you look and you go, man, um, I, I'm successful in my career. I've been able to move up the ladder. I'm making a good salary. My kids have more than um, most families are able to provide for their kids. And you just look at what you're able to do. And so you keep working harder and keep going, man, I don't have time for the things of the kingdom because I've got all these responsibilities and that's how I'm blessing my family. That's an idol. You're trusting in the idol of your hands more than you are the things of the kingdom. Uh, and so I think it's important for us, man, to be kind of hit with that truth and go, whoa, man, what are the idols in my life that my hands are making? Um, there are idols can be your own children. You can make your children an idol before the Lord because you're so into your kids and making sure that they have an incredible experience, that they're successful, that you put the things of the kingdom aside. You don't have time for church right now because you're doing all of these other things that are so demanding in a kid's life. And so church sort of takes second place to those things. And you think that you're doing it as a good parent. And your intentions are great. Um, and I'm not knocking you for being involved in sports. I love sports. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that those things can become idols before the Lord. And somehow in our minds, we justify that we would never worship idols. But when we look at our lives and what our hands are creating and go, is this before the Lord or not? Is this before the kingdom of Christ or not? Another one could be your home. And people spend tons of money on their homes. Um, greatest investment that we have. Um, and certainly I, I love my home, uh, but a home can never come before the things of the kingdom. And so when I support um, the things of the kingdom, both with my giftedness, what God has given me with my abilities, uh, with my intellect, uh, with the resources that God has allowed me, it are those, the same types of things are the things that I use to enhance my, my home. And I think the takeaway here is that if we don't use equally and give equal weight to advance the things of the kingdom that we do, the things of our home or the things of our lives, then we're idol worshipers. And as we read the Old Testament and see all of these warnings about being people who worship idols, we shouldn't be giving ourselves a pass because we don't have a, a little carved image in our house when we have all of these images that we're creating with our hands are just a whole lot bigger than the little things the Israelites are doing. So let that thought like stir you up and kind of get you to a point where you can think about, man, where are the priorities of my life? What am I doing? Um, how am I going about my life as a disciple of Jesus that's supposed to be about the kingdom, going out and making other disciples that make disciples? Man, where are you at? Um, a lot of people go, I don't have time for that. And the reason you don't have time for that is because you're an idol worshiper.